This is the Blix Double, D-U-B-B-E-L, <laughs> kind of a fun play on words here, because you can support two riders. You've got your captain up here that's steering and controlling the electric assist and the throttle, and then you've got your passenger back here. You've got these awesome foot pegs, little skirt guard right here, this little storage compartment. I really like this optional front rack, optional basket. So as you see it here, it's pretty accessorized. We got a lot of additional stuff. It wouldn't come with the pad and the pegs and the basket and the bag here. This would be very approachable. It is a step through electric bike. So it's just easier to mount and stabilize. And because this has pretty unique wheel size here, these are 20, but they've got 3.3 inch wide tires. Kenda K-Rad, they've got puncture resistance. They're just gonna give you a little bit more stability, some cushion, and they're a little bit taller, so lower attack angle than a narrower tire. So for me, I mean, you're getting some stability, some comfort, a little off-road potential, and then that hauling capability. I would consider this a utility bike, a little bit of an off-roader, but it doesn't have a suspension fork. It has a rigid steel fork, and check this out. They've got some additional threaded eyelets right here bosses on the stays and that's pretty neat I mean you already see how many other accessories you can add to the bike whether it's a child seat back here or maybe you move this basket to the rear panniers we've got this standard pannier hanger standard gauge tubing is what I mean and then a blocker right here that's pretty cool there's just a lot you could do with this bike I love that it comes with these sturdy steel fenders. Now steel does add a little bit of weight and this bike is fairly heavy, especially with two batteries. With just one battery pack, this down tube battery, it's gonna weigh about 70 pounds. If you add that second pack right here, that's like 7.6 pounds. So something like 77, 78 pounds total, but the weight is kept pretty low and center on the frame. That rear wheel has a hub motor in it. This thing is rated at 750 watts nominal, 1300 watts peak, 90 newton meters of torque is what they say. And you do get additional power and strength when you have a smaller wheel because you get a mechanical advantage. It's not having to turn this really tall wheel. So again, the, the bike being more approachable uh, to mount for yourself, for a passenger, to load if you're, if you're loading it up. I think you can handle 50 pounds up here in this front rack. It is mounted to the steer tube of the bike, so it's not going to tip as you steer the bike. It's, it's very sturdy this way, and that's kind of the right way to do it, in my opinion. This is two pieces. You've got the platform on the bottom and then the basket. So you're going to spend some money if you really want to kit this thing out like we see here. On the rear, I think you can handle up to 150 pounds back there. And you'll notice that these foot pegs, they can be positioned in two different spots. So if you're a taller, like adult rider, put the peg down there. And if you're a smaller child or something, you can put the peg right there. I think that is really cool. These fold up and out of the way so you don't kick that when you're, when you're riding. You don't have the passenger. And then for the rider themselves, I think this can handle like 270 pounds. So it's a pretty capable machine. And coming back to that rigid fork versus a suspension fork, you know, that's gonna keep the bike a little stiffer and maybe sturdier. It's gonna reduce the weight of the bike. As I mentioned, it's 70 pounds without uh, the second battery or any accessories. And I, I didn't weigh this with all these accessories here, but I imagine it's, it's quite a bit heavier. Had they gone with plastic fenders, they could have saved some weight and you wouldn't get rust potential. Like with these, if you scratch that, it could start to rust over time. And the fork being steel, same thing, rust potential, not the end of the world. And again, steel's fairly sturdy, um, maybe a little less rattly sounding than aluminum. There's always trade-offs and these are sized perfectly. So the bike does come with the, the fenders. It does also come with integrated lights. We got a light down here. And if you get that front rack, you're not gonna be able to see that headlight quite as easily from these upper positions, but down here, you'll still be able to see it. And it does point where the bike steers. Okay, so it's it's decent. It even has a little side cutout um, on each side, like a line that's going around a piece of plastic. It's not quite as bright, but they say 80 lux. And the side window, again, it's kind of a kind of a minimalist thing. Back here, we have an integrated light as well. It's a single LED and it's protected physically by the rack. So if you hit a wall or it tips over, it's not gonna hit the light itself, but it's not quite as visible because it might be a little bit blocked by the tubing on that rack. There's always trade-offs to consider. And if you're someone like me who cares a lot about 
comfort, this bike is a little bit more upright. You can see there's this relatively short stem, 50 millimeters, and then we have this like BMX high rise handlebar. So you can tip this back or forward, kind of swivel it to change your reach. This bike does only come in one frame size. It does come in three colors. We're looking at this new cream. They have gray, they have white. White's gonna be a little bit more visible. If you're someone who cares about that, you'll notice that these tires don't have a reflective stripe on them, but I believe they do have puncture resistance. And coming back to comfort, the maximum recommended PSI on these is 30, but you can lower it a little bit if you wanna improve your comfort. It is going to increase the contact patch as well. The tire will kind of spread out. And that's great if you're going off-road a little bit, maybe through softer sand or loamy terrain, kind of wet marshy stuff. These aren't officially fat tires. They do kind of look like it, but fat tires start at four inches and these are 3.3. So it's a very unique size. Rad Power Bikes has the Rad Runner and that was the first time I saw this tire size and their Rad Runner is, it's kind of similar. It's got this rear saddle thing. It's got an adjustable height seat. This kind of resembles a mini bike. You'll, you'll see like Super 73 or whatever. They got these pads that just kind of goes the whole way. I like having an adjustable height seat so I can actually get full leg extension as I pedal and just a more comfortable uh, body position. This is a 27.2 millimeter seat post, 350 millimeters long. So there's additional height and you can you know, fit a taller rider or bring it all the way down here and have that really approachable lower minimum saddle height. But I'm telling you the, the seat post diameter because you could swap this out with a suspension seat post. So lower the tire pressure, get a suspension seat post, you know, adjust the handlebar. And this thing could end up being really comfortable even without the suspension fork. The hub spacing up front is a lot like a fat tire bike. 135 millimeters and then it's a nine millimeter axle with a quick release skewer in the rear i believe it's 190 millimeters which is fairly wide but you need to have space for the disc brake rotor and this eight speed cassette and that wider hub motor and that motor is made by shengi if we look on the left side you can see the power cable and a quick disconnect point right there it runs on the left that's awesome it's tucked between the frame and the disc brake rotor it's just a little bit more protected here. It's not really sticking out too much where it could get snagged or stepped on if you've got that passenger who's sort of trying to find those foot pegs. Over here on the right, we only have one cable. That's your shifter cable going back to the Micro Shift 26, the eight-speed DNP nickel-plated freewheel. This is 11 to 32 teeth. That's a decent spread. Eight speeds gives you a few more cadence options than like the seven speeds that are just, you know, 14 to 28. So you have a wider cassette range for different um, speeds. Like I, I tend to go to the lowest gear when I'm starting, makes it easier to get going with a heavier bike or for climbing. And then I go down to this smallest ring, 11, for when I'm at those higher speeds. And this is a very unique point for this bike. The Blix Double, is technically class two by default. You know, it's got pedal assist as well as a trigger throttle, but you can use the app and raise it to class three, which would be 28 miles per hour in pedal assist. That's very unique. I've experimented with it myself. Their app is really cool. It's got like um, a mapping capability, so you can chart your course, you can lock the bike, you can change the level of assist, you can do some software updates. Pretty nicely done. It's just Bluetooth. It connects right to the bike. Nice to see that, especially on a bike that's more affordable. This thing's only $19.99, about 2000 bucks if you get the single battery option. That one only comes in white. So if you want the cream or the gray, you're gonna have to spend 500 more bucks, but you will get that extra battery. And these are both pretty high capacity. 672 watt hours is what each one is rated at. Technically, I've looked at the, the specs on them and they're, they're a little bit lower than that, but officially on the website, they say 672. So two batteries, high capacity, very nice. Both of them have the charging points on the right-hand side of the bike. They're very easy to access. They aren't way down here getting water and mud or something on them. They each have a power button, so you can run off of one battery at a time, or in tandem, they'll draw down 5%, 5%. And that's kind of a, an interesting concept. So it's, it's trying to keep them balanced, because if you're constantly cycling one battery and this other one's never getting used, well, that one's gonna lose its capacity over time more quickly. It's gonna kind of wear out more quickly. So I like that you have a lot of control over these batteries, that they're easy to reach. They're also fairly easy to remove. I have the keys over here, and this is where one of the trade-offs starts to happen. These keys right here, that's for the optional seat tube battery. These fancier looking keys, that's for the primary down tube battery. 
it's nice that they're sort of different so you can keep them separate and know which key you're going for. But at the same time, it'd be nice if there was just one key for both battery packs. As it stands, you'll need just more keys on your key ring whenever you go out riding. The other trade-off is that when you're going to charge the bike, you have to plug each battery in independently. It's not like you can just plug into one spot and it'll fill all of them. So after several hours of charging, you might want to check on the bike and see how full the batteries are and then you have to unplug and plug it in. For people that want to charge overnight, what does that mean? You get a midnight snack and get up and switch the charger. You know, th that's just something I think about and it's a little less convenient than some of the very, very fancy double battery bikes but those cost a lot more. So all things considered, it's not too bad. I do wanna mention that when you're getting off this rear battery, it's fairly tight here, especially with this seat pad, but you have to raise the saddle in some cases, just a little bit crowded. And I wanted to make that point um, because if you're somewhere like we are here right now, this is Arizona and it's hot here, right? So if you park this in your hot garage, those batteries, the cells inside, even though they're 35E Samsung high quality cells, they're still gonna get kind of stressed over time if they're in a really hot environment. So bringing your bike into the laundry room might be a good idea, but then you're kind of scuffing up the floor, things like that. So taking the batteries off might be your best option. If you're doing that every time, unlocking it, sliding it up, and same here, unlocking it, kind of dropping it down. Look at, it's kind of crowded right here. There's the fender, it gets in the way. Maybe you turn that out of the way a little bit. I guess I'm just, you know, giving you the facts here. Extreme cold can also be tough on batteries. It doesn't wear them out the same way. It just temporarily lowers their effective range. So you might think, oh yeah, I've got like 80 miles of range because I've got two batteries and I'm gonna use pedal assist. And then you get out there and you only get 50 because the batteries are really cold. So that's another reason to maybe take them off or to park the bike in a cool, dry environment. I must say the double leg kickstand that they ship with the bike is very stable and that's great for loading a passenger or, you know, cargo and stuff. It can be a little tough to get this thing up. I, I kind of put my foot in front of it and drag the bike forward and then it stows eventually, but it does hang down a little bit, even more than the chain ring. Now the chain ring has an aluminum alloy guide on it. This is a 48 tooth steel chain ring and that guide keeps the chain from bouncing off track. It also acts as a bash guard and it's like a skirt protector or a pant protector. So as you're pedaling, your clothing doesn't touch the chain, doesn't get all caught and, and messy. These are 170 millimeter crank arms, nice Welgo platform pedals. So it's a very sturdy like bottom bracket, but the kickstand does hang down even lower than that. Okay, so this could take some strikes. Uh, feels pretty sturdy. It's like, I think aluminum alloy here, but it's got the plastic ends. And with a bike that's already close to the ground because of those 20 inch wheels, it's just a little bit of a trade-off. You'll notice there's a bunch of wires and connectors and stuff down here too. So it's just a little bit of a, it's just a bit crowded. And I would keep that in mind if you're someone who actually is going off road and you think like, oh, I'm gonna go over one of these rocks, it'll be fun. And then like, bang, you hit your, you hit your kickstand, you hit maybe hit some cables or something like that. You can also see that the motor controller, uh, battery controller here is, is a little bit exposed at the bottom bracket. Um, all this stuff is meant to be highly water resistant and it's fairly modular if you need to replace something. But, you know, I, I do sort of think about that. And with a heavier bike, it's also a great idea to have some, some good brakes. So we've got some Zoom hydraulic disc brakes here. They've got the hydraulic line as well as motor inhibitors on both levers. So that means anytime you pull the brakes, it's gonna cut power. You're not gonna be out of control. Pedal assist isn't gonna, gonna happen. Even if you were pushing down on this throttle, the bike's just gonna cut power. And that's, that's important uh, for a powerful electric bike, especially potentially class three. 180 millimeter rotors right here, dual piston calipers, 180s front and rear. And just like I was saying, the motor gets a mechanical advantage with the smaller wheels, so too do the brakes. As I look down here, you can see this is like a 12 millimeter threaded slotted axle. It slots into the aluminum alloy frame. And there is like a torque washer between the nut and the frame and it kind of keeps the the axle from chewing into the frame too much but we don't have a torque arm and you can see there is a threaded eyelet right here so they could have potentially added a torque arm this is a powerful motor i would just make sure that this doesn't come loose you know like check on your bike every once in a while make sure everything's tuned up it's very powerful components and if that motor ever drops out or spins it would it would probably strip off that that power line and then 
if you got to replace the whole wheel. I do love that they've got these sturdy black rims, sturdy spokes that are also black. They're a little bit thicker in the rear. I think these are 12 gauge and up front is 13 gauge. Okay, coming back up to the cockpit, we've got these just flat rubber grips, pretty generic. They do have end protectors, which is nice if you get close to a wall or the bike tips, but they aren't locking. They could twist if you really bear down. And we've got the shifter, which has a little optical view window so you can see what gear you're in. I like that both levers push forward. You don't have to use your pointer finger. A lot of times I'm reserving these fingers for braking. So that's kind of nice. Got a bell, friendly chime there. Some pretty good cable wrapping and internal routing through the frame until you get down to that bottom bracket like we talked about earlier. We got the throttle and the display. So when you're ready to go, you know, I've experimented with holding this O button and trying to activate the bike this way, but that doesn't actually work. You have to press the power button on one of the batteries. So either there or right here. And once you press that, kind of activates the, the display. This is really unique. I haven't seen this display before. It's just a circle grayscale, kind of a black and white. It's not super big, but it keeps the cockpit fairly clean. And imagine you're using the app and you've got a phone mount right here. You could use the app for GPS and you can change assist levels. You can do kind of everything you want from there. However, you are gonna be running down the battery on your smartphone because it's using Bluetooth and there are no USB charging ports. So even though you have a really high capacity battery pack or two, you just really can't use those for your phone. So that's something I'd love to see in the future. So coming back to the display itself, we have an up, down, and then that kind of O button over here. We're seeing speed and miles per hour right now, but if we press the O, it's gonna cycle through other readouts like pedal assist level, we're in zero right now. And interestingly, the throttle works. So this thing is like a little scooter, and I like being able to use that throttle with full power at any level of assist, because it means I can zip up to speed or get the bike stabilized if it's a little loaded up, um, or maybe catch up to a friend if I'm riding in a lower assist level or just pedaling. So I press O again, it says state of charge, percentage, I love that, 91%. So it's very precise. It's not just like four or five bars, kind of making you guess. And then trip distance, and then back to our current speed. Uh, if we want to, we can hold that O button for a couple seconds and it goes into settings. If you hold it too long, it'll turn the bike off. So we've got contrast, we can turn that up higher if we want to. We've got units, miles, Fahrenheit, so it's kind of giving us that feedback. Left side or right side, so it's talking about where do you have the display mounted. Backlight, 75, kind of turn that up. This is backlit, by the way, so at night you'd be able to see it as well. And then the version of the bike, there is a coin battery inside and it preserves all of your settings for quite a while. And that's, that's kind of nice, but if this is ever having problems, you might need to take it off and replace the coin battery. And then contrast, go ahead and hold the O button again for a couple seconds, and then it's back to viewing. So we have up, we can go all the way up to level five if we want to, and then down, you know, bring it back a little bit. If we hold the up arrow for a couple seconds, we'll get the lights. Now I'll finally show you, again, you know, that, that side beam really isn't super bright, but the headlight itself is pretty decent and it is fairly aimable. Kind of adjust it down if you want to. And then that rear light, we just have the single LED on top. Could be a little blocked from the sides. Uh, especially if you have like a passenger or something. So consider a lot of helmets these days have a light built in or reflective backpacks. Maybe you get the white frame to just stay visible and try to be safe. If we hold the down arrow for a couple seconds, we're gonna get into walk mode. <laughs> it's struggling right now, but it's working. And that's very handy if you're going across the area that just isn't comfortable for riding, or maybe it's really crowded. Again, this bike is at least 70 pounds, probably more like 78, 80, 90, depending on you know how many accessories you've added on. So having walk mode is really wonderful. I think that's about it, you guys. I'm gonna take this for a little ride. So I put my foot on the kickstand, kind of push it forwards. There we go. Again, you can see it just hangs down really low. I'm gonna take it down to zero assist and just pedal, I'm in the lowest gear. And it's doable, very quiet. Kinda of have to get used to that basket not turning as you steer the bike. But again, that's a very sturdy way to have it mounted. Fairly stable, whoa boy. <laughs> Maybe I need to eat my words here. Yeah, it's, it's fairly stable once you get some speed, but those smaller wheels can be a little twitchier. So the, the higher volume tires definitely help. 
brakes are very smooth. Yeah, I think you've got plenty of power with the 180 millimeter rotors. And then that throttle. Yeah, very satisfying to just get that power at any moment, anytime you need it. The throttle is within reach. It's one of my favorite features on this bike, especially if you had lowered the saddle and you're kind of using this as a get around town, just sort of scooter versus an actual bicycle. Now going over this speed bump, I actually hit the kickstand. There we go. So I could kind of see and hear it. And that's just another example of how this has pretty low ground clearance. So keep that in mind. Let's take it up and do some pedal assist. Level three. Very responsive pedal assist. See, there's the sensor right there. It's that, that black piece of plastic near the left crank arm, kind of surrounding the spindle. And that's really wonderful. So I've taken it to the highest level of assist. I wanted to do a cadence sensor test. We're in a low gear, but since this isn't a torque sensor, it's really listening for motion. So I'm gonna get the cranks lined up and push off. Pretty quickly, it's time to shift gears. There we go. Get that nice smooth cadence. Very good. I do feel a little bit of frame flex here, and that's usually the case when you've got these big heavy tires and racks and everything. Uh, this is a step through bike, even though it looks like kind of a mid step or high step. That's just the bag. The frame itself is like a deep V design. That makes it very approachable, but a little less stiff than a diamond high step. Even when I was turning uh, kind of steep, I heard the, the kickstand drag a little bit. Oh, yeah. So this that's about as sharp as you can turn. I can make it, I can do a U-turn, but <laughs> it just hangs down quite a bit. Let's go up the curve here. We'll just power into it. There we go, whoa. Road right up. stow the kickstand just put my foot right there and then kind of pull the bike back there we go it's really a two-hand thing difficult to film but now that it's here I mean it's very stable well guys that's about it that's the Blix double for 2,000 bucks or roughly 2,500 if you get the two battery option I feel like you get just so many options here you you can't see it but if this bag was gone there's actually four bottle cage mounts like right here and four more right there i mean almost like overkill but imagine having like a folding lock a bottle cage or just other accessories bags a seat cushion the racks even up here maybe like side bags or something it's an exciting bike it's approachable it feels good it's powerful for the full written review on this check out electricbikereview.com i've measured everything by hand my goal is to help you guys just navigate the space and check out cool products. This is a free review. Again, big thanks to Fit and Fun for assembling it and supporting me and making this a little bit easier. And of course, to Blix for sending a demo bike. Um, I've got a comparisons tool back at the site and I also, also covered the Ultra, another product from them. It has like the full size fat tires. It's a little bit taller. So if you're worried about the ground clearance and stuff, that could be a good one to check out. And I've covered tons of other sort of utility electric bikes like this. So between the compare tool and the forums and the comments. Hopefully you can find some answers. I love you guys. Ride safe and we'll see you next time.